Hey family, welcome back to I Love Me Me Me. So I'm sure that you already noticed that this is another book review. And um, it is called Don't Be a Wife to a Boyfriend by Shonda Brown White. I love this book. It's also subtitled 10 Lessons I Learned When I Was Single. So I just, I picked it up. Let me just see what she's talking about. Really quickly about the author. Shonda Brown White believes in empowering women by discussing relationship and lifestyle issues in a real way. This passion has led to speaking engagements and multiple radio show appearances. And she is a regular content contributor to nationally recognized websites. She when she isn't inspiring women all around the world she is a brand marketing strategist she lives in atlanta with her husband of almost eight eight years excuse me shonda shares some of her honest and refreshing life and love advice on her blog at shondabrownwhite.com so I just thought that this book was really, really great. Great. She talks about, again, 10 lessons that she learned when she was single before she got into her now marriage of eight years. She, uh, the, the book is only 100 and, um, let's see, 73, oh, excuse me, 147 pages long, uh, kind of short. I don't know if you can see, let me see if it'll focus. You see that it's not necessarily like the very small print. It's pretty, it's a decent size. I think it took me maybe a day and a half, maybe even two days to read it just because of life and everything else. But I wanted to come to you and share several things about this particular book. But before I do that, let me see if she gives an actual list. Yeah, so she gives an actual list of what the lessons are. Uh, the first one is uh, accept self-love before you accept love from someone else. The second lesson is let it flow, but don't get stuck in the gray area. The third lesson is don't think of him as a piece of clay. You can mold into what you want him to be. Can't change him. Lesson four, don't expect different results using the same habits. Absolutely not. We are not insane. Lesson five, don't confuse love with lust. Number six, make yourself a priority while you can. Amen. Lesson seven, don't make excuses for people who need to be excused from your life. Lesson eight, don't be a wife to a boyfriend, which is the title. Lesson nine, don't be that girl over 30 and worry. That is so many of us. That is pretty much like the majority of my audience. We are over 30 and sometimes we get worried because our partner has not shown up, but it's okay. And then lesson 10, nothing happens overnight. Things take time. So I wanted to talk, I wanted to actually read to you a couple things that stood out to me. I loved actually all of the chapters. I don't know if you can see in here. I'm going to try to pull it up. I have some highlighted areas, just some things that I found to be like, oh, standout things to me. I even like wrote on the side where you can kind of see the lines or whatever that just, again, stood out to me. So I wanted to read to you the first thing. She's actually talking about her dad and how she basically got her heart broke by the first man that she loved. So it says, we didn't feel the love from the first man we thought would give it to us the most. She's talking about her and her siblings. Nonetheless, we spent most of our lives trying to increase our self-love or find love through others. The only problem was I lacked the guidance from the man who was supposed to show me things like how a man should treat a woman, how to tell if a man truly loved me, or why I shouldn't take guys too seriously too soon. Even though my mom did a great job of raising me and poured as much good sense into me as she could, it didn't negate the fact that I still missed the security of my father's protection and approval. Even though I had my granddaddy around and other father figures to look up to, I missed the main man in my life. All of that helped reveal why I yearned so deeply for the love I never knew. Throughout my single life, I was on a quest to find approval from everyone else and sometimes at any cost. I wanted to read this to you because I do find that there are so many women out there that jump in and out of relationships because they are actually still seeking the love that they never received from their father. Maybe they are dating men that are two or three times their age, or maybe they're actually looking for um, a guy that they can sense can give them the guidance that they never received from their father, but they end up becoming like a child to the guy. And then that relationship dies off because 
we're actually looking for partners, not necessarily somebody that I have to grow up. You know what I mean? You have to be at a certain stage before you should get into a relationship. And I feel that um, sometimes when men meet these women who have not dealt with that particular baggage, meaning their daddy issue baggage, that he gets turned off by it. One of my brothers actually met a girl like this before and that was the reason why he stopped talking to her. He felt like he had to grow her up and he didn't want to necessarily spend the time and energy to do that. He already wants somebody who knows, you know what, my dad didn't get it together, but I'm actually okay. This is the lesson that I learned from that. And I will not, you know, um, let my children go through the same thing or at least try to give them the lessons that they need to learn themselves. So I wanted to read that to you because if you don't deal with your baggage before you get into a relationship, this is something that you will deal with, specifically your daddy issue baggage. And then you don't get the tips and tools that you need from your dad. And then you learn like most of us do who didn't grow up without who grew up without fathers. Now, I will say for me, my biological father was absolutely not around, but I did not feel that I had this specific um, daddy issue because I did have a great stepfather, even though I wasn't sat down to give like like she's saying, I wasn't sat down and said, hey, these are the instructions. This is what you should look for. This is how you should be treated, your expectations, etc. I wasn't sat down and had conversations like that, but I was able to still know that he loved me. He in interacted. He was a big part of our lives. We would make sure that we went out on family trips together just so we can still build that bond together. So no, even though I wasn't sat down to say, hey, this is how you should be treated in specific relationship with man versus woman relationships or heterosexual relationships however you want to word it I still got some or like a really good glimpse of what a real quote-unquote a real man a real upstanding man and how he comes in and takes care of the family also another big prop since I'm giving props to my stepdad who I, I often refer to as my dad um my mom had seven children and he came in and he treated us just like we were his own kids. He never like mistreated us. He was able to discipline us and my, my mom never allowed us to call him Mr. You know, his first name. No, she told us that we had to call him dad. And I actually, I think in the beginning, because I was so young when he came around in my life, I never even thought to say, you know, I'm not calling him dad. You know, I wasn't one of those kids. It was just like, I mean, he was always around. And honestly, for me personally, I'm sure my older siblings would have a different say about this. But for me personally, because he was always there, he was always around. My, my parents, them too, my mom and my stepdad, they, they didn't even get married until I was 12. But he had been around so many years that honestly, if nobody ever told me that he wasn't my stepdad, I would have thought that he was my dad because he had been around for so long. And, and it was reasons why I found out later on why they didn't get married um, earlier versus later. But he was always around. So he was always my dad. Like the birthdays, he was there. The going out on family, doing family things, he was there. When mom needed money to make sure that we had clothes or whatever it was, vacation, whatever it was, he was there. So anyway, I'm going off on a tangent, but I wanted to give props to him since I was already on it. <laughs> Getting back to the book. She also talks about setting your standards. And I do have, I have, I have a lot of it highlighted, although I'll try to run through it as fast as possible although I had learned I wanted to read all of this to you because you won't get the complete picture if I skip some things so let me just say that although I had to learn how how to let it flow I also learned how to determine when it was time to stop letting it flow in other words I used to have a habit of acting as if things were something they weren't and I'm not talking about having faith in speaking certain things into existence there were times when I found myself in countless situations where I was caught up and confused I often found myself in a place that I like to call the gray area think about the colors white black and gray a mixture of both when you are in the white stage, it is a blank canvas. It is just two people starting out and getting to know each other. Then there's the black canvas. This signifies that the white canvas has been filled in. In other words, both parties are exclusively and unequivocally committed to each other. Then you have the gray area. And that's where things get really confusing and it can have different meanings for different People. The gray area can mean two, two people are dating, but not exclusive. We have a lot of that. 
It could mean two people just met and they are, for a lack of better words, just messing around or just talking, just kicking it, friends with benefits. Another example could be both parties are close. I'm sorry. Another example could mean both parties are growing closer, but one of them may be hesitant to take the relationship to the next level. Those who fear commitment or going to the next level often use the gray area for this purpose because it's, because it is the perfect place to camp out for a while without any obligation. Yes. While the gray area can work for a certain period of time and for some people, it becomes difficult when things are left open for miscommunication or misinterpretation. For instance, sometimes we assume we're in a relationship while the other person thinks we're just friends. Even though we're doing things as if we are in a relationship, we fail to acknowledge the true status of the relationship. Because you still go with the flow, which is what she's talking about, this gray area. Oftentimes, we end up in the, in the gray area because we allow ourselves to get into or stay in situations without setting any clear expectations. I speak about this. I remember when I dated a guy for about eight months without ever truly knowing what our status was. It was obvious we were in the gray stage, but I was confused as to what was really going on. I thought I was his girlfriend and we were exclusive because we did almost everything together. We went on dates during the week, we studied together, we cooked together, attended parties and dances together. We even took many vacations together. I figured since we were doing things in the eye of the public and he was treating me like his girlfriend, then I must have been his girlfriend, right? But little did I know that that was not the case. I assumed something that I had not yet been acknowledged. Interestingly enough, later I found that he was involved with a number of females, but finally decided to be exclusive with one of them that I was not aware of. Mm. Imagine my confusion and frustration when I received a phone call telling me he was in an exclusive relationship with someone else. I mean, how could he be in an exclusive relationship with someone else when all the while I thought we were? I was devastated. I was so hurt. That taught me a lesson, though. Men will do what you allow them to do. Amen. I failed to discuss his and my expectations in the beginning, which meant I entered into a relationship without really knowing exactly what he eventually wanted from the relationship or what, if anything, we were working toward in the future. I finally... I failed to clearly communicate and discuss my expectations because I feared that if I had, then I would have been rejected. It was during this time that I had to decide for myself how long was too long to wait and how soon was too soon to discuss expectations. Obviously, a few weeks was a bit too soon for me, but eight months was entirely too long to go on thinking I was with someone who was not with me. Metaphorically speaking, I was basically wasting a lot of time driving around in circles trying to get to a destination when I could have just stopped and asked for directions sooner to make sure we both were headed in the same direction. And that is just absolutely true, ladies and gentlemen, especially my ladies. If you do not set your standards and expectations early on in the relationship, then you will get pretty much nothing. You will assume that you guys are in this committed relationship because you're doing everything like you are the girlfriend. You're going out on dates. Everything that she just said that I just read to you guys. You're going out on the dates. You're going on a mini vacations. You're going out to the cookouts. You've met all of his friends and the family. and do. But you two have never discussed the title. And when, when you do try to discuss the title with the guy, okay, first of all, let me just say this. If you have to bring up what are we, you probably are nothing. And that's just being honest with you. You probably are nothing if you have to bring it up. The second thing is, if he's not bringing it up, you probably are nothing. And he probably already knows that he doesn't want you to be anything because a guy that knows that he wants you to be around and be around for the long term will not let you just hang around in limbo land he won't because he won't want somebody else to come snatch you up so he gonna put a title on it and if he's dangling that carrot in front of you and saying you know what um, I don't like titles. I'm not ready for a relationship. Listen to him. Believe him. Move on. 
especially if you like him enough to try to build a relationship with him. If the, if he is saying any of these things to you, it's time for you to move on, sis, and it is okay. You don't want to beat him up or bash him because he's not ready for what you want, but you also know that you are making the choice if you decide to stay there and deal with that because you're going to change his mind. You're not. He has to change his own mind. And as you see from this example, he was doing all this stuff with her, but he had had a number of women outside of her. And then he chose one of them who probably gave him um, uh, uh, the standards and expectations. She's like, you know what? This is not working for me. That's who he chose. So you have to set your standards, put your expectations out there and do not just stay in the gray area as she called it. You have to know what's going on with this relationship. You absolutely do. Don't just think or assume that you guys are in a relationship, that you're starting to move to the next stage because you, there might not be any stage at all. All right. Finally, I just wanted to read to you guys. This video is getting a little bit longer than I wanted to be, but I did want to read this to you guys as well, where she's talking about how she's able to be a better person in her current marriage. And so she says this time around, he was the initiator more often than not, which ultimately showed me two things that he was into me and that he was willing to put in the work. He showed me what it really felt like to experience true love. I felt what it was to be treated like I deserved. He was constantly calling, emailing, writing letters and texting and vice versa. It was the opposite from the days when I was the one blowing up the phone and constantly worrying about whether or not he was going to call me. He took me out on dates. He opened doors for me. To this day, he still does the same. Eric reminded me of what courting and a real relationship look like. Eric is her husband. He made a point to come and see me every month during the nine months we were dating long distance. This time around, I was with the man who whose actions matched, matched his words, which in turn helped build my confidence in him as well as our relationship. It was something I had never experienced with any other man before. When we allow others to treat us below our standards and expectations, we also tell ourselves we're not worth it. At the end of the day, no one, male or female, should feel like he or she is doing all the work in a relationship. Also true, if you're doing all the work in a relationship, if you feel like you um, pretty much are um, bombarded and just kind of feel overwhelmed or, um, you know, you're always doing the calling, always doing the texting, you're always being the one that's making plans to see each other, whether it's to hang out or whether it's to actually go out on a date, then you're always going to be doing all the work. You're never going to feel like uh, it's a two-way street. And I say never. Yes, it could turn around, but usually when those situations happen, and I'm not bashing them, it's just not for me. But usually when those situations happen, it's years and years and years of being one-sided. And one day it clicks. And usually, usually that clicking is from an outside source. So I have a coworker really quickly. I have a coworker who said that, she was married for 16 years before she actually felt like her husband started to appreciate her. Now, I have to be honest, 16 years is a long time for me to stay and not feel like you appreciate me. Now, they're way over that hump. They've been married for over 30, 30 years now. So now she's even over the halfway mark, meaning now she is reaping all of the benefits from all of her sacrificing that she made um, to her now husband. And he even apologized to her. He knew that she wanted to have children and he was still ticked off at his uh, first baby mom. So they never end up having children. So there are some sacrifices that she made. And, um, she said that she definitely has seen a big difference because he got influenced by an outside source and um, their relationship has been so much better now. But for me, again, for me personally, I don't want to have to experience that if I do the research and absolutely apply these things to my relationship. I'm definitely saying to go ahead and pick up this book. Don't be a wife to a boyfriend by Shonda Brown white you will absolutely love it I already read to you all of the 10 um lessons that she actually learned and i just thought that it was a very interesting and very poetic and open and honest book
These were her actual experiences. She's not writing about a friend or anybody else. This is about her and her life and her experiences. So if you like this book review, definitely go ahead and give me thumbs up. If this is your very first time here to I Love Me Me, definitely go ahead. Go ahead, okay? Go ahead and subscribe to my channel because not only do I do book reviews, all of my book reviews are now on strictly about relationships, but I also give 100% relationships advice, the tips and tools that you need in order to have happy, healthy, romantic relationships. So we all can collectively decrease that divorce rate by simultaneously increasing the marriage rate. I love you guys. Thank you for listening up until this point, especially if you listen to this point, then you definitely want to go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I will see you again in another video. Deuces.